we've come out to this this area that I know that has a beautiful creek in this rainforest and there's a few waterfalls there that I've not actually discovered yet haven't walked the whole length of the creek so I'm gonna go on the hunt today for a beautiful waterfall and hopefully get a beautiful composition and you can tell it's springtime because I'm getting hot already time to peel off some layers and then my other objective for today other than getting epic shots of course is I'm putting together a new course called composition made easy so I want to get a beautiful shot of that so that I can discuss chapter one of my course but more about that later for now I just want to get into this gorgeous forest see if I can find an epic shot as always, Amanda was super excited to be back in the forest, because it really is our happy place. There's something about knowing that you might bump into a mountain lion, a pack of wolves, and maybe a bear or two that just makes it so much more fun. If only I'd remembered to bring the bear spray. So I might have my facts wrong, but I think I might be right here in that when you see a big shredded dead tree like that, it's a bear that's been worrying away at those timbers looking for a nice bug, a big fat juicy protein filled bug. Maybe it's termite queens, I'm not sure, I might have my facts wrong there. If you know, let me know. But yeah, when you see that in a forest, that means there's a bear around. What about you, Amanda? Could you, could you eat a big fat juicy protein filled grub? What, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> Amanda does have an irrational fear of bears, so I probably shouldn't tell her that I packed the smoked salmon into her camera bag and not mine. So for this type of photography that I'm after today, the conditions, are, they're just absolutely perfect because we've had recent rains, so everything's saturated, everything's wet, all the colours are really popping, there's nice contrast and there's, there's darkness to the shadow areas, and that's what I like best. But also I've got soft, bright, overcast light. So it's not a totally dingy day. It's quite bright, but there's a bit of cloud covering that sun. So there's no harsh, super bright highlights creating that patchy dotted light, which makes it very difficult to shoot waterfalls and forest scenes like this. So all of the conditions could be absolutely perfect for a tremendous shot. It all depends now on what the water levels are like are in the creek. If there's not enough water, you won't get a shot. If there's too much, it's, it's kind of messy. So I'm hoping that the conditions are gonna be perfect. So far, I'm quite optimistic. Here on Vancouver Island, we're really lucky that volunteers go into the forests to maintain some of the trails, which can't be an easy job. So this stuff, this stuff is called Devil's Club. It is absolutely evil. It looks like ginormous fingers that are suffering from arthritis covered in spikes. It is nasty. And if you get this stuff, like I've gripped this by accident, got completely stabbed to death by it. If you get these little needles in your skin, it takes forever. You, have, you actually have to grow them out if they're completely embedded. Devil's Club, avoid it like the plague you. And it's bloody everywhere. But on the whole, the forest offers far more delights than nightmares. And when it comes to landscape photography, well, you'll see. So we've just stumbled across this big old tree that's fallen across the trail. And if you look at this, you see these holes here all the way up the trunk. I might be wrong, but I think these are from woodpeckers because I've seen this uh, kind of thing happen before where woodpeckers will just worry away at a tree and this is the typical result. I can't think of any other reason why. If I'm talking complete crap, I'm, I'm sure you'll let me know. After an hour of hiking, we finally reached a part of the creek that offered some lovely photo opportunities. It was finally time to take a break, soak up the scenery, and enjoy a very bland, diet-approved snack. How's your diet going? Diet's going good, thanks for asking. I lost a bit of weight, don't know if you noticed. I did notice, I was going to mention, yeah. Oh, well, thanks for that. Well, no, I'm eating lots of fresh vegetables, lots of fruits like this, mm. and my willpower is strong. I cannot be tempted. Mm. What about you? I don't think I've ever had a diet in my life. Really? Yeah. Mm, all right, for some, eh? Mm. Mini eggs. Mmm. You know that after twirls, those are my favourite. 
You know that, don't you? I didn't. Yeah, but you didn't, though. Is it too tempting? Oh, no, no, no. I've got, I've got an iron will. No. I'm... Did you want one? No, no, I'm not even... I'm not even tempted. I'll just enjoy my apple. Okay. Bang out of order. <laughs> Bang out of order. <laughs> Much rather be eating this apple than your crappy mini eggs. <laughs> so as I mentioned earlier, I'm out today to try and put together the beginnings of my course composition made easy because I, I feel like composition is by far the most important aspect of landscape photography. I mean, look at this place that we're at now. The light is just kind of overcast. There's nothing particularly epic or dramatic happening with this light, but through composition and framing up a beautiful shot, I might just get an absolutely gorgeous image today. And that's all about composition. It's not about light. Now, of course, if you do get great light, that's fantastic if you're pointing in the right direction, but it's no good having spectacular light in a car park. You're not gonna get a beautiful shot. You're not gonna get a lovely landscape image anyway, cause it's, it's a car park. So to me, uh, light comes after composition. Composition is by far the most important aspect of landscape photography. So what I'm gonna do with this course is I'm gonna break it down into chapters. And each chapter, I'm gonna give you guys a free preview and I'm gonna make each course very small, and very affordable. But if you wanna see the absolute nitty gritty, very detailed tutorials, then those will be available for purchase on my store. So chapter one is called finding the shot. So finding the shot, well, what it all boils down to is asking yourself a series of five questions. But the first question that I want you to ask yourself, and, and, and it's not just landscape photography, it could be any kind of photography, is what is my subject? So if you can find a very obvious and clear subject in your image, that's gonna make it much easier for your viewer to identify with that image. Looking at this scene right behind me right now, I'm pretty sure you know that it's, it's quite obvious what, what I'm here to shoot. It's that waterfall. That's gonna be the central subject of my image. So let's just say you were shooting a mountain scene. You'd get to that mountain. Quite obviously, I'm taking a picture of that mountain. So in this case, the mountain's replaced by a waterfall, but that's just my lead subject. What really matters is how I frame that subject up, what I put in front of it, what I put to the side of it. What do I surround this beautiful subject with so that I can make a much bigger, more beautiful image? If you can add supporting elements to your composition to enhance that lead subject, you'll have a much more compelling image and your viewers will connect with it on a deeper level. You know, it's easy for me to say, look for a clear subject. I've spent years sort of refining that mental process. And so now it, it comes a lot easier than it used to, especially compared to when I was starting out. If you are a beginner, you may struggle with that. You may think, well, well you may be one of those super lucky people who can go into a forest and to you, everything is absolutely amazing. And it's difficult to differentiate between this little bit of white water here and that far more impressive pile of white water directly behind it. it. It's a case of, well, what looks amazing to you? So what I would suggest is to start off with, if, if you can't clearly identify what, what are the more impressive subjects, go to popular places. I mean, we have national parks and provincial parks for a reason because they are the most notoriously or the most famously beautiful areas. This is a very obvious thing to say, go to beautiful places, but it's gonna make it a lot easier if the, the star of the show is far more obviously apparent, you just walk up and there you go. So a perfect example would be Niagara Falls, right? In Ontario, it's humongous, it's noisy, it's dangerous, it's powerful. It's, it's quite an obvious shot. But what you could do once you're there with your more developed eye is start to look for smaller areas of that overall picture and refine your composition and, and make things a bit more considered, a bit more thoughtful and a bit more planned out. And that's gonna give you much better images. So let me give you some examples of clearly defined subjects. In this image, the light, the mist, and the perfect reflection are the elements that make this a special image, but it would be nothing without the clearly defined subject of the fairy tree. 
This image of the sand tufa at Mono Lake is another obvious example of a very clearly defined subject. As soon as I saw that central tufa mound with its strange shape, I knew I would make that my main subject. And lastly, this image has the most obvious subject in that the entire frame is filled with one wave. Because once I'd made the decision to isolate just one wave formation, it made composing the shot very easy. I just had to get the timing right. Right, let's take the camera off and go on the hunt for the shot. Scouting for compositions is a lot of fun, especially when you can enjoy the luxury of having lots of time. By getting down low, I'm, I'm kind of looking upwards and I've revealed all of this lovely, these branches that are covered in moss, this dripping moss. It's like a ceiling of green moss. No, no white patches of sky, absolutely gorgeous. So that's a shot right there. I suspect I'm probably gonna wanna get potatoes deep in the water. Okay, so now I'll go further up try and find some shots there and then I'll go further away. With my main subject decided upon, I'm now on the hunt for other elements of interest to complement my main subject. So this is kind of cool, it's kind of like what I was talking about earlier in that there's an element of this shot that won't really reveal itself properly until I do a long exposure. And that is these spiraling uh, areas of, of bubbles there. So that's probably gonna work quite well, but I'll now I'll go a bit higher up and see what I can get. Composition hunting is one of my favourite things to do. I find it immensely enjoyable because it combines the thrill of the hunt with creativity while spending precious time out in nature. And then the, the other thing as well is, even though it's quite obvious to shoot up towards a waterfall, you can actually get up and shoot down the opposite direction so that the water is moving away from you rather than close towards you. Oh, look at that light that's hitting that right now. That's absolutely glorious. I couldn't resist a quick snapshot of this alternative view. And while this wasn't really the composition that I was after, sometimes these spontaneous moments of looking behind you can often yield the best compositions just not in this case. So after working the scene and figuring out what all of the supporting actors are in this scene to support my beautiful waterfall, I've determined that this is my favorite spot. And the reason why this is my favorite spot is because there's so many complementary subjects and characters around the waterfall. So what's really caught my attention is these boughs, these lovely moss dripping boughs that just arch right over the top of the falls. I mean, that is that is absolute gold. And then on the sides, you've got these lovely moss covered rocks that just curve right towards the waterfall. And then on this opposite side, you've got, again, you've got these, these mossy trees leaning in from the side with this mossy bank. It's absolutely perfect. But as a bonus, as a bonus character, if you will, when I polarize this shot, which you should be able to see now, hopefully, you can see through this water to these beautiful giant rocks that are underneath and they're, they're glowing green in this soft, soft light. So there are so many supporting characters in this particular composition that I feel like this is my shot. I really like how you've got, it's kind of framed, you've got a mossy tree that's arcing in from that side and mossy trees that are arcing in from the other side to create this lovely frame. And it works as many different aspect ratios. This would work just as well as a four by two almost like a panorama and I just cut off this foreground and it works brilliantly as a three by two as well. And in this foreground, I've got these lovely rocks with these white striations. So this has got everything that I would ever want in a waterfall forest shot. So now I've found the shot. I'm going to get back in. This is the exact spot I need to be. I'm going to get back right here and take this shot in earnest and really pay attention to the technique and the, the focusing and the ISO and the shutter speeds. 
Not too bad for my very first attempt at photographing this part of the river. I managed to include three of the four supporting actors that made it on my list. There's the mossy boughs, the spiralling bubbles in the bottom left, and that lovely green glowing pool, and as an added bonus, those gorgeous mossy rocks. So while this is a waterfall image, there's much more for you to look at. If you look in this frame here, I've got this big patch of white sky. I really don't want that. So we've revealed things that aren't necessarily good for the shot. There's two ways I can get rid of that. I can either angle this down. So just loosen this tripod head and just angle it down like that. Or better still, go back to the comp roughly and then zoom beyond that patch of sky and fill the frame with what's more important. Now, that's given us two things. And first of all, if your subject is bigger in your frame and our subject, our main subject is the waterfall, by zooming in, that has become much bigger in the frame and that's never a bad thing. What it's also done, what we've also gained in this image is if you look to the bottom left here, even though there's probably no more spirals than there were before, because I've zoomed in and I've moved to the left, they've, they've become a bit more apparent in the frame. Oh, look at this lovely bit of light that we're getting right now. So that's a cool thing as well. So simply by moving to the left and having to adjust my composition by either angling down or zooming in, it's completely changed the composition. And I actually do like this one. I think the first one is still my favorite, but now that I'm in this position and now that we've got this lovely bit of light, I'm actually gonna stop recording this, get the shot, and I'll show you what it looks like in two seconds. Hmm, on second thoughts, this might actually be my favorite composition from that day because I managed to include all of those lovely supporting elements, but with that tighter focal length, it made my main subject, the waterfall, more prominent in the frame. So teaching the art of composition is essentially teaching you how to adopt a particular mindset. So if you want to learn more about composition, consider downloading chapter one, Finding the Shot, where I cover topics like defining your subject, enhancing your subject with supporting actors, where to position your camera with elevation and position, choosing a focal length and the art of storytelling. It's on sale right now, and there's a link in the description below. Okay, back to the vlog. Well, I'm pretty much done. I'm delighted with the shots that I got today. I think I got like three or four. Can you please pass me a lens cloth? You want a lens cloth? Yeah. Is it in your bag? Yeah, that, thank you. All right, yeah, I'll get it. What are you eating? I'm not, an apple. <gasps> I thought you were on a diet. It's an apple. So good. No, it's mini egg. It's not mini egg. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? You're out of order. 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 You're on a diet. You're doing so good. I knew these were a bad idea. You know what? You eat them. You deserve them. You work hard. I do today. deserve them, don't yeah. I? We're f apples. Apples are bullshit. I do deserve it. Ha 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 ha!